And remember when Master had said that I would come to America, one day my mind went away from Rachi, and all the boys were bothering me with little slips. And I went to the storeroom and told Rama, our servant, where he was called brother, we called no one servant. He said, Brother Rama, do not tell anyone that I am here. And I fell into an ecstasy and I saw myself in America. And I was talking to God and I said, you are taking me there at last. My work is done here. And right at that time, a teacher and two students had come. I said, what are you talking? I said, God is taking me away to America. And I saw many, many faces who are present here. I saw them then. I recognized afterwards. So, in that vision, I saw many, many of you. That's how I recognized. Most of you are here, whom I saw there. So that was a great, great occasion in my life. And when I came out of the restoration, everybody knew that I was going to America. Of course, some teachers played a little joke, said, well, shall we hold the lantern ahead of you? They were new teachers. I said, don't joke, I am going by the three o'clock train. Those that were very devoted, they knew what I said was true. And I had no money then, nothing. I never received any salary, as I do not hear, or any income from any books. I had the vision between 10 and 12. And that day at 3 o'clock I left for Calcutta, and everybody cried. I had a little monkey that I had gotten. He was most human. He used to scratch my head and give me massage. And when I fell asleep, he would do this way. And I said, what are you doing? And he would go on like that. <laughs> and when he thought I was asleep, he would go down and say, where are you? And he would jump and start massaging. And that monkey broke the chain that day and went away. He felt that I was going. It was a very heart-rending scene. He was intuitive. He knew I was going. So my father asked me, it reached my father's ears, and he asked me, what is this nonsense I hear you are going to America? I said, I am going. He said, who is going to finance you? I said, God. He said, I am not going to give it to you. I said, I never asked from you. But you never can tell. I said, you may change your mind. He said, never this way. I said, that's all right. I didn't ask you. And next day, when I had gone out to meditate, getting ready to go, Master said, all paths are open. Father left a check with my sister, saying that I was very wrong to do that, to contradict you that way. God has asked me to give it to you. And he left enough money to buy passage in that cabin, first class cabin. And I went back in the evening to return the check. I said, I can't take it from you because you must have been coerced by my words. He said, no. He said, I was adamant. Adamant in not giving you anything because I didn't want you to go. But God has changed my thought. I couldn't help until I wrote the check to you. And he told me, don't take it from your father, but as a student of Larry Marsha, the mission that you are going to preach. And he cried. He said, when are you coming back? I said, three months. If the Americans don't need me. And that if became 15 years in this country. So I haven't forgotten. I remember at home, if I didn't get my food at 10 o'clock, I used to call down the servants. So when I went to the hermitage in Benares, there was no talk of food at all. And oh, was the hunger gnawing in my stomach. I said, my, I never experienced like this. But when food came, I so much enjoyed. 
So one day I heard that we had to wait for the headman to come. And you won't get to eat at 12 o'clock, but 2 o'clock when the train comes. I said, Lord, hurry up the train. I was praying to the Lord. I, I cannot stand any longer. I never expressed my discomfiture inside, but I was praying. But the train was late. He arrived at 5 o'clock or 6. <laughs> I said, isn't this enough, Lord? He said, now we eat. Then I heard he went to meditation. <laughs> I said, would you hurry him up, please, until he finishes his meditation. 8 o'clock he came. His eyes looking brown. And so much food was given, I had two helpings. I was, I was famished. And he was picking on food like that. So I said, look at this man. He doesn't appreciate good food. <laughs> so when I went to his room and I was giving him a little massage, which is the custom, he said, you know, I was traveling on the train for four days and said, the vibrations were so wrong, I didn't eat anything. I said, tell me. You mean to say you didn't eat anything? So what, he says. I didn't drink any water either. I have much more interesting things than food. And I said, shame on you. These few hours you fasted and look at you. And he understood what I was thinking. So I said, you must not ask any food. I said, I don't ask. But when I don't get it, I feel very hungry. <laughs> So he said, God will give it to you. Don't ask. So I said, but suppose nobody gives to me, I die. He said, die. Die to know that you don't live by food but by God. Place food and money in front of you and your heart fails. What good does it do? All food consciousness vanished from me. So I want you to learn that true happiness, which is unconditional, it is not conditioned on fatigue, or food, or money, or anything. When you find that unconditional happiness, then you will find the happiness of God. Otherwise, you won't. Movies have one fascination, because I see the whole world as movies. I was in the booth, and I saw the operator was reading a novel. And I saw this automatic machine was going on and the beam was causing on the screen a terrible horror picture. And I said, Lord, how is it? I have the whole show of the universe in front of me. You are this operator who is thinking of new plays and your nature is throwing this beam in the sky. And I see the hero and the villain are nothing but pictures. Nobody is killed. Many were being killed and shot in this picture. But I saw from the booth, it was the light that had created the villain and the light had created the hero. And a voice said, remember, the villain is created so that you don't become the villain, but that you love the hero. If you become the villain, your throat has to be cut. And now you see that there is no villain, no hero. They are both pictures of my beam. After getting away from the villain and evil, or tasting poisoned honey, taste the honey of goodness and then come into the beam, and you will realize that all this world which you see of terrible wars and troubles is nothing but a picture show, cosmic motion picture show in the sky. You will be surprised. You never analyze that as soon as you sleep and dream, you can create a world like this. With people suffering from cancer and disease and wars and some smiling babies born, old men dying, then when you wake up, you see that all those things were made of your dream consciousness. So remember, this is the same. Nothing different. And until you find that out, this world is a terrible show. I said to God, as he was talking to me, but Lord, look at the audience. They are howling and screeching downstairs at this horror show. I see that it's nothing but pictures and light, because I see the invisible beam. There are no murders in the beam, no heroes, not villains in the beam. 
But Lord, what about the audience? They don't know it. Then the voice said, Tell them all to look at my beam within and they will realize that this show was given to entertain them, not to get mixed up with it. And that reminds me of my experience when I was once coming from New York to Los Angeles dressed this way. A movie actor was sitting in front of me. He was extremely disgusted with my long hair and this robe. He was openly sarcastic. But I was highly amused. I knew to be angry with him would be childish, and to let him go on being angry was also foolish, so I thought of healing him. I said, pardon me, why do you make such a face? He said, none of your business. I said, of course it's my business, because every time I look ahead I have to see your face. <laughs> so he started laughing. He said, what an audacious person you are. I said, we will understand each other in a little while. I said, you know, in this world, we are all a little bit crazy and we don't know it. <laughs> because crazy people of the same kind mix with the same kind of crazy people. And I tell you, I know about your craziness. And if I were crazy like you, you would like me. And if you were crazy like I am, then we would like each other. But the thing is this, I know about your craziness, but you don't know what kind of craziness I have. And fools argue and wise men discuss. Let us discuss, and if at the end of the discussion, constructive discussion, I lose, I will follow you and be a movie actor. <laughs> and I said, if you lose, you follow. Me. So we had a two hours discussion, and at the end of two hours he lost, and I won, and I was saved from being a movie actor. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, that's one of the greatest things Master said, that we are hypnotized by our environment, and we can't see anything beyond the horizon of our experience. True happiness lies within simplicity of living and whole living in God. That's why God, Christ and the Masters have sent this self-realization as a new dispensation to give freedom to people, establish the temple of true happiness in the souls of men. That's what self-realization teaches. The technique of meditation recharging the body battery with cosmic energy and helping your fellow beings. And this is our theme, and we are marching on. This work has spread all over the earth, and Self-Realization is marching on. For it is not a creed or dogma, but a science of the soul and spirit, how the soul descended from the cosmic consciousness into the earth, and the body and the senses and property consciousness, how it can disengage itself from property and body consciousness by yoga concentration from the body itself and the plexus and then the ganglia and reach the Christ intelligence in creation and God the Father, God consciousness beyond creation is the purpose of this work. And as you feel by the practice of Kriya Yoga, the presence of a happiness that you never felt before, the true happiness of meditation, the ever-increasing happiness of meditation produced by Kriya Yoga is the proof of the existence of God. This was the greatest thing Master told me. When I asked, what is the image of God? He said, right when you sleep, you are formless, you are sleeping in space, you are the image of God. The daytime you become a man, night time you become a God. Be a God in ecstasy, with ecstasy in the daytime, and you are God all the time. I said, that made sense. When I practiced Kriya Yoga and was filled with ecstasy, the joy that I couldn't find eating ice cream or having an automobile ride or talking to people or playing, when I sat and practiced, I found the presence of God. 